Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. We'll just give everyone a couple more minutes so that more folks can join and we'll just start this off. I think we should be good to go. Let's kick this off. Thank you everyone for joining Digit 2.5 release webinar. And today we'll be talking through a lot of uh, application related changes, specifically related to the UI, which have happened as part of this release. You will have joined the last webinar, which we did for 2.3 and 2.4. Uh, so a lot of details have already been added as part of 2.5 as well. So you'll see UX revamp both in property tax module and HRMS module, trade license module. There's a new version. Uh, there's a revamp in mCollect as well, and even in receipt cancellation as well. So there are a few additional features added as part of FSM and workflow auto escalation. And then there's also the WhatsApp version V2, which has pay included in it. So today, specifically for this release webinar, we'll be focusing on the UI and UX enhancements. So for that, we have Antariksh here today, and we'll also be focusing on the WhatsApp version two. So you would have already seen version one, I think as part of the Jan webinar, when we released that. So version two includes uh, functional changes on the PGR side. So some UI changes there, and also introduction of WhatsApp pay. So this basically is the agenda for today. As I said, we'll only solely be focusing on the UI and UX design, which Antariksh will be taking us through. Uh, and we'll be focusing on WhatsApp V2. And if you have any questions, I think after the session ends, after individual session, we'll pick them up in the Q&A chat box. Meanwhile, if you have any other queries that you want to reach out to me for, you can ping me in the chat window. So that's pretty much the agenda for today. Uh, I'll just stop sharing my screen. Antariksh, you want to pick it up from here? Yes. Thanks, Ajay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me present my screen. Let me know if my screen is visible. Yep. Can you guys see the presentation? It's visible, Antraksh. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So before we jump into like design system the demo, I would like to like you know, give an overview of what a design system is and why we actually need it. Like you know, what was the need for us to like you know, build our new UX with the new design system? So just walk you through quickly through the slides before I we jump into the demo. Okay, so first of all, what is a design system? Give some time to read. So basically a design system is a collection of reusable components guided by clear standards that can be assembled together to build any number of applications. So this is needed when you like you now start building application, which is scaling a lot and it's large breadth to cover. Mostly used in the enterprise applications where like, you know, the modules keep on adding and this application becomes larger and larger day by day. So that's when you need a design system to work with. Quickly going forward. So uh, a design system has three key principles. The first one is the efficiency. Like, you know, what it, what by mean by efficiency is like, you know, uh, instead of repeatedly building similar components from scratch, the system enable designers and developers to use components and thereby increase efficiency. First principle is efficiency. I will cover everything like, you know, uh, with a real world example when I jump to the demo part, but just for now, I'll quickly go through the slides. The second key principle of the system is consistency. It's very straightforward. The next term introduces a shared set of principles and rules to build components. It becomes much easier to create consistent experience through our different platforms. And the last one is scale. If you want to build something at scale, you need a system in place. Yeah. So when we started our design system, we have like, you know, specifically very high level goals in mind which are these, like you know, creating a cohesive experience across our own products, and then in enabling the designers and developers to work more efficiently together. And also like, you know, how we can use, you know, enable third parties to use our system and extend it to create their apps, or also to extend our own system as a collaborative thing. 
Yeah, and what are Ransom contains? So basically, it contains a centralized access point, which can be a website. It contains design languages, like what is the design philosophy we are focusing on. It contains a design kit. It can be a, a design kit can contain a Figma or a Sketch, whatever tool we use for designers. And then it, it contains component library, which is specifically for developers. We have documentation for each and everything. We have sandbox. Sandbox is specifically again for developers to play around with the, uh, with the components. And then the governance model is needed when you know, third party or partners start to you know, extend it, collaborate, and add on to this system. So that's uh, we'll quickly jump to the demo. So Antarik, okay. while you go to the demo, uh, you were talking about the need for why we switched our entire UI UX system, right? So yeah. can you talk about that briefly as well? Uh, so then, uh, why we switched to a new UX, uh, we had initial design, which was um, working well in Punjab. After a lot of like, no, user research and we went on ground, we felt a need of like, no, revamping the whole thing. And when we, and when you want to revamp something at this large and this scale, you, you need a design system in place you know, so that it, it's, you have a very cohesive experience across different modules. So that's what we, we felt the need of a design system and that's where it evolved. So uh, is my screen visible? I'm into Figma now. Figma is a tool like, you know, which we at eager use for everything about design. It's used for UI design, UX design, brainstorming, ideas, ideations, everything. Is my screen visible to everybody? Yeah, it's, it's visible. Yeah. Okay. So very quickly, I'll just show you what are the basics. So first, we define our styles. When I say style, I mean the colors which will be used in our application from our UI components to charting, libraries, everything. We define all the colors first. Second is we define the typography, what, what fonts has to be used across screens, whether it be on mobile or desktop, we define it separately. And third, we designed the uh, iconography, you know, what, I, what sort of or what style of iconography will be used across our applications. And then we have the common components, like, which we'll be using across. And yeah, each component will have states and everything. Okay, now let's take an example, how we use this design system to build a few of the modules. I will just give a quick example of property text. Let's let's jump to property text, and let's go through a very basic flow of like you know, citizen coming and paying their bills. If you see, these are mobile screens for citizens. A citizen has come. He has logged in through his mobile number OTP. Then not to be verification name, and then he sees his her bill. He clicks on the bill and see the bill details. And he clicks on pay and does the payment. So how a design system helps here? If you see there is, there is a common consistency across like, you know, the design language, the colors, the, the components used. So styles is one thing which we can see there's a consistency across screens. The other thing which it helps is identifying common patterns. For example, like, you know, a bill details, once we define a pattern in property text, the same can be used I'll give you an example. The same bill can be seen in the water simulation model where you pay a water tax. Does nothing changes, just the, the taxes changes. It remains the same. So that's how you start building com common patterns, which can be reusable. You know? uh, now, if you want to build some other module, say uh, where you have a payment or we have a bill, so you can just use the same component and reuse it instead of reinventing the wheel every time. The same goes for payment screens or payment because It all becomes now common pattern, which are now used across models. So I've shown you for PT, the same is using water and sewage. The same can be used when, you know, when somebody applies for a trade license. One more example of is how do you capture addresses? Okay. We have defined a very common pattern of how do you capture addresses across models. So we start with a, a map, then you fill the pin code, and then you ask, once the user fills the pin code, the city and locality automatically gets populated based on the pin code. The same same pattern gets used everywhere, like, you know, even in a fire emergency module. 
So I'm just trying to uh, show how you can like, you know, how design system can help you uh, three things, you know, work at efficiency. You don't have to recreate everything every, every now and then again. You have, all you need to do is reuse those, those components and patterns. And then how do you, how using this, you can make something at scale. Like, you know, now I can make like you know, n number of modules n number of applications, which have like you know, these things using these components. So this all thing I'm talking from a, a designer's perspective, but I will want to any questions, any, any, anyone till now, do you have any designers in, in house, in the panel, any questions? Any glad... Query. Yeah. You can put it in the chat yeah. window. Yeah. You can go ahead and search. Yeah. Okay. I've shown you this. This is the certain facing stuff of the UX. Now the same design system, same components, same styles can be used to create the employee facing side of the application. For example, if I go to property tags and go to a employee facing UI, which is say an inbox. Let's let me go to the inbox. Yeah. So this is the employee inbox, you can see, where employee sees all the items which has come to him. You can see the same thing, like now we have used the same components, same style, same buttons, same design language. So it, it creates a kind of consistency across your product. So everything looks and feels like part of a one complete suite. Yeah, let me go through. Okay, now I will talk about like, no, uh, this is how you get like, no, why we use design system because it gives us like no, efficiency, it gives us power to scale at a speed and it, it brings like, no, some coherence and consistency across our different modeling modules. And also it cuts down the, let's say, now the question is a design system, how, how easy is this to customize a design system like, no? For example, uh, let me give you an example, what I mean by it. For example, you use our design system to build something and you go to a client and the client say like, no, I, I don't like this primary color orange which you're using. So now that my primary color, if you see, it's, it's, it's one, one variable for me, which is defined. So if I go ahead and change my primary color to any other color, say blue, it automatically reflects across my thousand of screens in, at, in one single click. So this is how you can like you know, customize that scale when you use a proper design system. I will revert it back for now. Otherwise, yeah. So this is how you can uh, customize it. When I say customize, you can you can not even only customize styles, but you can also customize like you know, these components. If if you want to have a different style for, of a text box or a different style for a button, you can you can do that. So, but everything resides in one common place. So if you change here, it can change on all the hundreds of screens which are using. So it's one single source of truth for, for you. Okay, now I have covered design system from a designer's point of view. Uh, I will also touch up on like, you know, how, how developers use it. So uh, the, the things which you're seeing here in under design tool Sigma, the same thing is, is also built by our developers. When I say developers, mainly the front-end developers. So they will use, uh, the front end technology to use to replicate the same thing as a front end, and which you can use the same way the components, reusable components, patterns across. So, every a design system always has is a live, also has a live version to it. So, which we always be in sync with developers. And how it helps is uh, let me give an example. Now, if you have a coded version of, say, this, these all things ready. And suppose a new model comes and you have to make a, say a form, a, a, a search screen. So you don't, you don't even need to design the screen. I mean, the, the components are already built for you, developed for you, just the product managers can directly like, you know, sit with developers and get it done in very, very fast pace. So that's, that's where the scale comes, you know, when you design it scale or develop it scale. Uh, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of the uh, the documentation which we are working on uh, which is going to be the part of next release i guess it's still a work in progress so we are in process of like, you know, documenting everything and and putting it on a website it's um, just a sneak peek it will be a, a posted website it'll look something like this where you will have all all the documentation related to our design system 
you can go to foundations and see read stuff like you know, why we have chosen certain certain headings or why we have chosen certain fonts all the philosophy behind it when to use which fonts when to use what paragraphs when to use what colors all has been in process of documentation so in a month or so probably it will be live here you can also find like you know, all the live components for example whatever components which we are building say text input when to use a text box how it looks how different states with all the documentation will be available for for everybody to who wants to build on top of uh, this digital design system platform or if they want to extend it or mm, yeah so and that's pretty much it that's i i come to the end of my thing any questions anything i'm happy to take it now or maybe at the end of the so i think one uh, particular question which pops out uh, mm -hmm. is someone's asking how do you actually so you talked about reusable component on yes. the design side but how do you actually convert these to angular or react in yeah, one go so, and how does that modularization work out yes yeah, so that's again more of a develop question to a developer i'm not a developer so but i can answer you uh, so once we do everything uh, there's something since we use uh, react primarily we, uh, developers have built a storybook out of it so they they take this comp for example a text field they will make this component all this with all the properties props all the different states and they maintain it in a storybook so as we maintain as a designers in our sigma they maintain in their storybook and they can reuse the components uh, i am i hope i i make sense no it does answer i think yeah. broadly yeah those modules and details are covered so uh just checking if there are any other questions on the new ui ux design system from a ux point of view do you also want to focus on how screens have become uh, easier to navigate compared to what was there in earlier versions of digit i think that again could be helpful see the major uh, difference between early versions of digit is is we are focused primarily on the mobile first approach for citizens early version didn't have the mobile first approach they were mainly desktop friendly but if you see the new new ux it's targeted to this mobile first approach so for citizens it doesn't start on from a desktop view it starts from a mobile view and then it can scale to a desktop view and there are certain philosophies like for example uh, instead of like you no know, having like you no know, putting 50 fields in one one single screen asking user to fill a form we have sort of make made like you know, a conversational behavior like you know, where you ask one question at a time so that the user is not overwhelmed so these are all design philosophies uh, we can we can have a separate session on that it's it's very fair yeah i mean so just for everyone else's benefit yeah. the idea was because we all the government services form generally what we have seen are very cumbersome yeah. for citizens to fill out so the idea was to the, yeah so the idea was not to replicate the yeah. the form on the screen uh, it was to have a, a different approach to it it's it's more like you no know, how would you call someone how would you chat with someone you know some and then you ask questions and then you fill one thing at a time it's not like you just throw one big form and user is confused what to fill also uh, also uh, on the employee side we have uh, made a lot of ui tweaks to make a employee day to day tasks easier if you can see as employee inbox we have done something some color coding we can quickly see and like you know target the things which are in red so these are red amber green color coded things yeah so antarksh uh, before uh, i think we jump off to the next session can you just let everyone know which modules in digit now are on new yeah. ui I mean, just for everyone. Uh, we we have uh, almost shifted everything uh, to the new UI. We have shifted uh, the cover. You have to accept complaints, PGR, property tax, the them collect trade license, fiscal service management is already on the new UI. NOC, water and sewage we are working on. So water and sewage is is the one which is pending. Apart from few billing billing modules, other things are uh, OB pass is one big module which is uh, again a work in progress. is a building plan thing yeah probably uh, um 
in a month or so when we publish our design system i can also uh, try to publish the figma link where everybody can see like you know, what what we are working on what all what all things are there what's coming up it be more collaborative okay i'm just checking one more question in the q and a box uh is there an option to directly export for react or angular components uh, no not uh, right now but you can still get some for example let me show you you can still get some css if i go over here and inspect you can get the some css code which you can use in your code but not like a, a complete react react component i mean uh, the world is moving toward no code and low code but yeah we have still some time to actually convert everything from design to code perfect are there any other questions on this and if not if you have questions for later you can always <clears throat> excuse me uh email on partner at egov.org.in yep so any specific design questions will be happy to take after the session as well perfect i think we are good oh, okay there's one more hand up just oh, yeah. one second Let me see. Sumit, uh, one second, Sumit. You can talk, Sumit. Yeah, hi. Uh, this is Sumit. So, uh, from the government perspective, I have seen that you know there are certain templates that certain government organization want to follow. For example, let's say certain banner image, changing layout. uh meaning that there will be a logo on the right hand side chief minister logo something like that so uh how flexible or how much change we can i i have seen this so there are certain things definitely we can change from the you know customization point of view but then if government says that you know to change layout and all these things so can we get a detailed idea that what is the complete Breadth of uh, UI that we we can change or we can suggest. Uh, that's a very valid question. We have also uh, come up come across this situation. But uh, the thing is, you have to make a like you no know, a, a a balance. Like you, know, you can't put like you no know, the minister's photo on every screen. So what uh, what you can do is like you no know, have a strike strike a, a balance. Try to have a landing page or a splash screen kind of a thing where you put the uh, okay. Thing, and then you can move forward like in your application once you once the citizen is in the application he, he doesn't need to see like you no know, the photo every time on all the screens there there are ways of doing it yeah you can handle more sure just checking if there's one more hand up not really okay i think we are good is there any other question i saw one more hand up but i don't see it right now Okay, we can carry on. If there are any other questions, we can pick them up at the end of the session as well. Uh, so I'll give it off to Harry, who is the product manager for uh, WhatsApp PGR, and he'll be taking you through the entire demo of WhatsApp version two, what we're building there. Hi, thanks, Ajay, and thanks, Andrex. So let me just share my screen. Uh, is my screen visible guys yeah hari you can go ahead okay yeah so before we start with the demo i quickly want to spend some time on uh, on what whatsapp as a primarily as a citizen channel version to offers so there are a couple of key areas that we have worked upon uh the first one being uh, the messaging we have worked on improving the overall messaging and the the, the chat experience with respect to whatsapp uh we have primarily worked upon improving the user flow and also making relevant changes to the to the messaging text we have tried to minim like minimize the uh, more nesting kind of uh, flows which i'll show you in in, in the demo something new that we have introduced is call to action buttons within within the conversations basically so now 
for certain messages citizens are not required to uh, not required to input uh, input the uh, input the text they can instead have that step just by clicking up a button and the and the step can be performed easily the next is uh, we have for certain sections we have tried to incorporate nlp that is natural language processing basically some uh, some examples include say for example when citizens have to select a locality out of the list of say 50 to 100 localities so instead of selection drop downs you can now enter the locality and, and the chatbot kind of gives you the inference whether the locality entered is present in the system is not present in the system so those kind of changes have been have been made and also uh, on the second area that we have focused on is the bill payments industry so we have we have looked into we have covered both the cases for bill payments here we have looked into the use cases where we have linked mobile numbers say someone who has already used digit and all is already a mem like has been part of uh, digit they can make the payments and also for for citizens who have never used digit they can also avail whatsapp whatsapp as a channel to proceed for payments for this also we have uh, we have introduced uh, payment history and also there are certain access controls on the on the part so i'll quickly start off with the demo okay and before before starting off i just want to set up a context i want to tell about the first user persona that we are targeting so here's a scenario where we have the citizen uh, Sheeta Arora. She's a resident of Amritsar and is aware about M Seva. That is the initiative that is running in Punjab. And in in the past, Sheeta has used M Seva both at the counter as well as the web-based services to pay the property tax. And her own mobile number is linked to all all the services. She recently got to know about the M Seva WhatsApp and now wants to use the same for making an outstanding payment to the property tax bill and also view the property tax payment history so i'll be i'll be showing you how people can make uh, make the payments through through the whatsapp v2 version okay so this is how this is so for the onboarding process this is a standard uh, iec or a poster basically that is say for example in this case it will be installed in amritsar for people like citizens like people so citizens have an option to kind of have to either either give a missed call or they can kind of scan a QR code and they'll be redirected to the chatbot for for uh, for availing the service. So I'll quick I'll quickly switch the device now. Okay, let me let me just stop sharing my screen. Let me just switch my device and I'll show you the demo. Give me a second. I hope I'm audible. Am I? Ajay? Yeah, you are audible, yeah. Okay, let me just share my mobile screen. It's visible, now. Okay. Yeah, so once Sheetal has scanned the QR code, an auto-populated hi will be shown, as shown in this chat. Now, if she sends hi, she'll be prompted to select the language. And in this case, I'll continue with English. Once language is selected, she'll be greeted with the, the message here. And dear citizen, welcome to the MCMA. And there'll be an information message here. For, for the personalized experience, we are capturing citizen's name here. Now, as you can see, Sheetal, since she's already used the system before, so her name is already auto-fetched from here. And it says whether it's found uh, this name is li found linked with this mobile number. So Sheetal in this can, case can confirm or change the name. And in this case, I'll confirm. Now, Sheetal is on board. And these are the options that, that she can avail with respect to her municipality. OK, she can file complaints, track complaints, pay water, sale, pay property tax bill, a view payments history, change language. So we'll proceed with paying property tax bill. So I'll, I'll enter four. And these are this is how the unpaid bill is shown. So this is the bill, and oh, the owner name is given, the amount due, and what is the due date. So uh, so right now we have configured it to three bills. So uh, if a citizen having say mo a mobile number linked with three, see three separate properties. So at at the time you can you can see three bills. 
So in terms of keeping in, keeping in mind the uh, user experience. So I'll click on pay bill. And I'm redirected to the, uh, to the common pay screen here on my browser. And it shows the, it shows the fee estimation, the breakup, how's the amount calculated. So you have all the, all these specifics defined here. If there are earlier details, what is the, if the amount is required to be paid in full? Is it required to be paid in partially? So, and also who's the, who's paying it up right now. So I'll proceed to make payment. I'll select the mode. One second. So I'll just enter the details here. Okay, I have entered the details. I'll proceed to pay now. So you can see that payment is successful here. And now in this case, once payment has been successful, so citizen Sheetal in this case will be will be redirected back to WhatsApp. Okay. And parallelly, you have the you have the SMS that has been that is received telling about the payment and also on whatsapp once the payment is made uh, so citizen will receive the receipt there and there is a there is a success message as well that bill payments has been successful and she can and you can pay you can proceed to pay either either bill or you can go to the main menu so here if i click on the receipt it shows you the the con the contents of receipt here and we have the receipt number, we have the unique ID, the pair name, and the pair contact number. So all these all these fields are customized customizable dependent on the dependent on the implementation that we are dealing with. So that's the first use case on how a bill payment is made in case in case the account is linked. Now I'll now I'll switch back to the switch back to the deck to kind of give an overview on the second type of use case. One second. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah, Harry. Okay. So this was this was the case in case of Sheetal when she was making a payment. And then we have a second use case here uh, in in a scenario where user's mobile number is not linked. Okay. So we have Rashmi here, uh, who's a resident of Zirakpur, and she has been paying the property tax bill on behalf of her mother from the past two years. Rashmi has never used any MSEVA mobile app, web app for online payments. But because of COVID, uh, Rashmi cannot proceed to make over-the-counter payments. And she also recently got to know about the MSEVA app and wants to use the same on, on her phone, basically, to pay the outstanding property tax bill. So I'll quickly share this use case. Okay, let me just switch back to my phone. Give me a second. So already I'm 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 skipping I'm skipping the on uh, onboarding process for for Ashmi. So I'll just show you how it works right now. So the same options Rashmi has been already been onboarded. Now she wants to pay the property tax bill for for her mother. So how she can proceed. So I, you can see that her mobile number is not linked to the selected service. So still, still she can proceed to pay the, uh, the she can proceed with the payment using the property ID that is mentioned on the 
property tax bill or the receipt so the so the chatbot asks whether she is aware that whether the property she knows the property id or not so i'll take the first use case basically where the property id is known so if i click on yes so the chatbot will ask that please enter the property id and the property id should be in this format so so i'll just enter the property id here and you can see that that the that the bill is shown here so the bill is on the on the related property id and the similar procedure can be followed if she clicks on paying the bill she'll be redirected to the to the uh, to the chatbot so to the common pay screen and she can make the payment and in that case both uh, rashmi as well as her mother whose primary mobile number is linked will receive the uh, receive the uh, the receipt now this is one use case if i now in case if rashmi in this case is not aware what is the property id okay so if i click on it here so the same message so in this case she is not aware what the property id is so you click on you select no so there is a provision so we have provided the uh, provided the redirection to an open search open search that is there for for searching the property and here are the here are the steps to to search and pay the property tax so this infographic is a six six step pointer basically helping the citizens to to understand that how they can search the property and how they can make payment accordingly so for for the upcoming versions we are we are going a bit a bit more innovative in terms of maybe introducing an inbound video rather than an infographic so that is something the design is still in the progress so that's it that's it from my end so this is this is just a just a scenario on on how the whatsapp whatsapp can be used for 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 as a citizen enablement channel yeah so do we have questions oh i don't see any specific questions in the chat window or the q and a box but if you have any specific questions do put them there i think you for everyone else you've seen the demo of what we've done using whatsapp pgr before so this is an extension in terms of uh, what payment being enabled but i think i see one hand up just give me one second meanwhile you can add your questions in the chat window window or the q and a box if you have any with respect to the entire release could be with respect to whatsapp could be with respect to designs or uh, narulla you can talk you can unmute yourself and talk Oh, Narulla Heather, I think your hand was up. Okay, we can skip that. Uh, are there any other questions on queries, either on the new UI UX design or on the WhatsApp uh, enhancements on Digit? uh so there's one query can you please show the pgr flow on whatsapp so hari you can yes. you show them the pgr flow yes we can we can definitely sure one second let me just switch back to my mobile screen okay uh see now rashmi wants to file a complaint regarding regarding the garbage disposal that is happening near a area an area so i'll be showing you the flow for that so she clicks on file complaints so there is a there is a, a consolidated list of of the complaint type like what is the what is the grievance uh, for which the citizens wants to lodge a complaint against so here we know that it's for garbage so it's still like garbage here and what specific within the garbage then there is a there is a second layer to it so it says that garbage needs to be clean needs to be cleared so i'll select the second option 
and then there is a provision for uh, for the citizen they can even attach a photo photo of the of the of the grievance so in this case if i select the say we have selected this sample photo right now so now once the once the photograph is attached so citizens can also share the share the location of the grievance site and to do that we have kind of we have a infographic here a three step infographic so how they can how they can share the location so they can pin on the pin on the location on the location section on the phone and then they can select the select the option to send the current location and it will be and then the current location will be pointed onto the map since it, in this case this is configured to punjab right now and i am and i am not staying in punjab so i'll continue without without sharing the location aspect i'll continue by using one so it will ask me if, if i have not shared the location so in this case they ask that what is the for what city you want to lodge a complaint so i'll type so now i have i have typed amrit amrit sir as a wrong spelling here so the bot now this is where we have used the nlp basically so the bot understands that whether citizen is trying to communicate amrit sir or any related spelling so they'll they'll kind of send that message and citizen can confirm so here i i had typed amrit sara so it was matching to the amrit sir and in this case if i select yes is to confirm and then it will ask what is the name of your locality now in this case if i if i have locality say again if i type a wrong locality okay so it will again prompt me so my so the premises might be near the dental college so i have entered khalsa college here so again the chatbot prompts that okay whether is this the locality that you're looking for and citizen has an option to kind of confirm it or to write again now in this case i'll confirm once it has been entered the citizen gets a gets the the success message that complaint has been registered and they can click on the link to view the complaint and in case and once the once it has been assigned so citizens will receive an update on their whatsapp that the complaint has been assigned or which level it is but which is it has been escalated to so all those details will be received on whatsapp yeah so that's pretty much it any questions be happy to take think we should be good i think there's another question with respect to any demos planned for the whole set of digits so because antariksh was throwing in a bonus i'll also throw in a bonus so internally we've been working on an open demo instance so the idea is to have a public instance which anyone can access and have access to all of the digit modules and you will get credentials for all of the different users there so i will post that link right now just give me one second this is something again it's in works it's not uh, i think you should be able to use this but it should ideally be again refactored in a couple of weeks but the basic mod uh, module itself is here so the link that i have posted right now one second i've posted it only to panelists so the link that you see docs.digit/accessdigit so this is a new a tool that we've added to our documentation website through which you'll be able to access an open instance uh, which has all the latest modules of digits updated and you will be able to log in as either a citizen or as an employee and for employee credentials for the same will be generated so all the different roles for all the different applications is something you can access here so anytime you want to reference a live digit module to see what different functionalities and roles do we cater to this is where you can go so i hope this is useful because this again was in works for some time and a uh, few things will be i think filtered out in next couple of weeks but uh, it, it should be good to use and if 
It doesn't work even. I haven't checked this yet. Just email me once. Just pinging my email ID as well. And I think I've added one more dot, but I'll aim to get this live uh, or fixed in next week or so. So hope this helps. This should be used for, I'm guessing, all of the partners. Uh, you need dummy data. So dummy data for specific, for example, for finance, right? Let me see uh, internally. I think even for building plan approval, we generally also have a dummy DCX file that is used. So let me see if I can also get a repository of dummy data added to the same segment so that you will have access to all of that. Kaushik, you can just email me or I will share the contact number there. Are there any other questions that we can possibly pick up? Perfect, I think we are good to go. And thank you everyone for joining Digit 2.5 release webinar. If you still have any queries, you can directly drop a note to me with respect to the demos that we did and even anything else under the release notes. And do check out the access digit tool that we have recently added, will be super useful for all the partners. And thank you, Antariksh and Hari for presenting. I, yeah, I'll hope to talk to you again. I think I keep talking to each and every one of you, one way or the other. So we'll meet soon again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Ajay. Thanks, everyone.